everybody, it's Erin Reed from Erin Reed Makes, and welcome to Card Making Wednesday, but today is on a Thursday because I had no internet yesterday. So welcome, and today we are going to make some super cute and fun Halloween cards. Welcome to the show. All right, I cannot wait to show you these super Halloween cards, super cutie Halloween cards. So let's jump over, and hello everybody who's on, hello, hello. Let's flip our camera, look how adorable these are. So we're gonna be playing with a lot of fun little techniques and ways to incorporate Halloween stamps with things in your stash and to really showcase all these amazing stamps and die sets from Prickly Pear, because that is who we are working with today. So we are streaming live on Prickly Pear Design, Facebook and YouTube and Erin Reed Makes Facebook and YouTube. And before I get too far into this, there is still time to enter into my 20,000 subscriber giveaway. And Prickly Pear Stamps is one of the amazing, amazing sponsors that is part of this awesome giveaway. Link is down below to join and to enter in. There is a Google form and that is your entry in there. One entry per person, please. I will be filtering out if you entered more yourself more than once. So please only do it once, save me a little bit of work. <laughs> and there is a ton of prizes over $1,200 worth of prizes from some awesome, awesome people. Let me show you guys all of the wonderful sponsors. Just take a look at this. Look at them all. Look at all these wonderful sponsors. And Prickly Pear Designs is one of those wonderful people. So if there's any of these stamps and dies that we're gonna be playing with today, you definitely can get your hands on them because they're giving away some gift cards. So it's your choice what you want to purchase from them. Now, in order to enter again, fill out that Google form. If you are a member of the Aaron Reed Makes YouTube channel or Facebook channel, it gives you an extra entry into every one of my giveaways that I do. So if you are in the lower tier, the, the, the teal tier, you get one extra entry. The silver tier, you get two. If you're in the glitter tier, you get three. And there are going to be some prizes that are very specific to membership, to my YouTube channel membership. Um, so there, it's, let me say that again. There are only, there are some prizes that are very specific only if you are a member. But there's a bunch of prizes if you're just watching the video. Okay, or just, you know, enter in the form. You have a couple of days because I will be announcing the winner on the 3rd, this Friday. So you still have time to enter. Link is down below. Okay. I'm done. I'm done mentoring all that stuff. So, and thank you guys so much for being so amazing with all of the wonderful comments about hitting 20,000, but now we're, we're here for cards, right? So let's get, let's get back to cards and seeing all of your lovely faces and comments. Well, I can't see your face, but I can see your comments. Hello, Debbie. Hello, Susie. So let's jump into this first one. We are going to do a little bit of some stenciling. So we're going to jump into this card first and look at this. It's got some glitter on it. It is just so much fun. So we're going to play with the bat one first. And I just took a gray sheet of paper. Um, I already cut all the mats and you could have fun and you could do whatever color on the background that you want. But I did, um, just kind of mimicking what it would look like if you had a full moon. So then I also did the black and then I did the gray because I really wanted to have like a gray spider web but still be able to stamp on it. So hence why I went with a gray background versus black or white. So just kind of changing it up. So here we have, whoops, here we have our gray. I'm gonna show you guys this new tool I just got, of course, buried in my desk here. Um, it is a really, really cool. It has a, been a life changer for me in terms of stenciling. It's this new mat, um, and it's a sticky mat. This one actually comes from scrapbook.com, and it fits awesome because it goes in our Misty, which we're gonna be playing with again in a little bit. So I'm gonna play and place this on here. I'm just gonna go right about there, and look. The paper sticks to it. So not no longer do I have to worry about the paper swimming around on my design. I'm then going to take my stencil and I want it kind of going, if you notice, it's kind of coming off into the top corner. So I'm going to place that there. And then just to make sure this doesn't wiggle around, the stencil doesn't wiggle. It's partially stuck to here, but I've got lots of layers. I am going to take, so this isn't sticking very well because it's just too many layers. I'm going to take my little art mat here. But instead of having the magnets being on the paper like I had before, because the paper is sticking to the mat, all I have to do is put, go right about there. I want to leave enough room to put a stamp down here. So I'm just kind of eyeballing how much space right there. So now all I have to do is put the magnets on the stencil. And I don't have to worry about that it's on my paper. So I don't have to wiggle my magnets all over the place, which I absolutely love that. So I wanted my 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 uh, 
cobweb to kind of shimmer and shine just a tiny bit. I didn't want it to be like, oh my God, it's full of glitter, but I wanted it to be a little bit of something happening in the background here. So I'm going to use this white modeling. This is a pearl paste from Crafters Workshop. The cutie bats are from Prickly Pear, but I had to create the back. I'm sorry. Now I'm not using that one. I was going to use that one. I changed my mind. I changed my mind. We're going to use the pearl white stardust butter. This one goes on a lot more smooth and you can see it's still got, you know, it's like got a little something to it. I felt like it just popped. I did like four or five. I tried ink blending, which I threw away because it just didn't look the greatest. This I love the best. So it's just as nice. It's a very kind of a thinner paste. It's not super thick. And we're just going to take a little bit. And there's so many awesome people on. We got Debbie and Rebecca and Susie. Hello, hello, everybody who's on. So we're going to put a nice thin coat. Don't go too crazy here. It's a nice coat. Going all the way to the edge. We're going to catch all of that cobweb. Stencil is from Crafters Workshop, and so is the paste. And it's just to give us that pretty background. Like I said, I tried doing ink blending, and maybe I just didn't have the best white ink to do it with. It's a little old. And it just kind of got muddled. It didn't look that great. So I was like, well, what else could I do? Well, you know, paste are awesome. Paste are all really cool. And I feel like it popped a whole lot better. So there we go. Just trying to get all those little, if I can see a line and it's over top of the paper, that means it doesn't have enough paste in it. There we go. Dun, dun, dun. And just kind of wipe off all this. Now we're gonna set this part off to dry and I'm gonna take all of my excess and put it back in here because there's no other colors, there's nothing in here that's a problem. So, I mean, like it's not gonna contaminate the jar if I put some back. And then I have some water here and this has been dubbed my stencil container. <laughs> so whenever I'm done using something, cause I can't go run. If I'm off camera, I will immediately go to the sink if I'm dealing with any kind of paste or anything and go clean everything off so it doesn't get gummy and gucky. And I have a really nice clean stencil for the next time I use it. If you're ink blending, you can just use a paper towel or a cloth to wipe it off. But pastes, uh, because they dry and they get hard, you wanna clean them with some soapy water. So while I'm live, I can't do that. Or if you're in the middle of like crafting and stuff and you don't wanna have to run up and go clean and sit back down, you can have a tub of water. And this is just plain old water. And you can pull your stencil off and then it can just rest in the water. So let's pull. Let me, go, let me get my arm out of the way so you guys can see. And look, there's our stencil. So you put this in here. Give it a nice good zhuzh off to the side. Make sure wherever the stencil, wherever you are touching with um, the stencil, up, you get it in the water. Make sure you can even move it around. Try to get your paper all wet. I just did a little splash. But you want to get everywhere that you put stencil on, and then you can kind of wipe your hand off with a little paper towel. So really makes stencil work a whole lot easier when you're doing it that way. And then I want to clean up. I'm just going to lift this up real fast. It's sticky. I don't want to leave this on the mat either. So I'm just using a paper towel and just wiping my mat clear to get so it doesn't dry on my sticky mat. And the best way to describe the sticky mat is it's like a it's like a cricket mat, but it's sticky. It's kind of cool. Okay. We're actually going to leave this just off the side because we got to let this dry before we can add the super cute bats and before we do our stamp for this. So we're just going to put this off the side. It won't take too terribly long because it was such a super thin coating. So we will come back to that card. And in the meantime, let's move on to this cutie one. I love this one. This one's adorable. This has got such cute stamps. And let me show you guys the stamps that go with this. They are adorable. And I think I have fallen in love with these sets. There's, we're gonna be playing with a few of them. There are a whole bunch of these awesome, awesome stamp sets. No, I'm gonna go upside down. So here's one, let me get that paper towel out of the way. Here's one, and uh, here is the other. Look at these. So let me get this guy out of the way because that's just annoying to be in the background there. So what's cool about this is that you have all of these pumpkins I know that glare is pretty awesome right here and you have all of these pumpkins here and then there's even like a couple of jack-o-lantern faces you can do in the blank pumpkin and there is a singular die which i have all of my i love this thing you can put your dies on the front and on the back the whole thing is magnetic this is also from prickly pear so every die that I'm using, like what I'm using for today is on here and I can grab it as I need it. It's really fun. And it's like, they're on there. There's even a little stand that, so you can stand it up because it gives you some more wiggle room on your desk and you're not having to lay everything down flat because 
real estate on your crafting desk is just like a premium, right? So there is a singular die, move that back off the side here, that can fit every single one of the pumpkins. So you have six pumpkins on this set and look at there how cute they are. There's a kitty cat set, there's a little trio of kitty cats. So it's not just Halloween, there's also autumn in here too. There's a cornucopia, this beautiful autumn one. This one's got a little kind of zhuzhi swirly thing with some little birds. Here we have, we're kind of getting into Halloween. Here is the spiders that I did. And all I did was I stamped this on um, orange paper because pumpkins are orange. I did it on white and I was like, this looks weird. So it's because pumpkins are orange and it made sense that the spiders were black. So it just, it worked. And we have this really fun tree. And that's what we did for the card that we're going to make together is I stamped and then I die cut out the tree. But on this set, you get some more kind of autumn ones, the plain one. And down here, it's like a spooky place in the back. So one stamp or one, yeah, both of these stamps work with the same die set. And then you also get the little leaf part. So you get a leaf, a leaf, and then over here is also the leaf. So you could get both stamps and the same die works both ways, which I think is like the best bang for your buck when it comes to like, okay, you really love this concept and it's not just Halloween, it's Halloween and autumn. It's all blended together. So you can get a ton of different cards and different projects, tags, you name it, with just a couple of products, which I love that. I absolutely love that. <laughs> okay, so let's put this guy together. Whoops, that didn't completely, there we go. All right, so we have already, I've already stamped and die cut out. So I did the tree down here. And just as a heads up, these are called the pumpkin set. So pumpkin set one and two, this is one, this is two, and this is the pumpkin die. And as a heads up, all links for everything are down below. So if you see PPS, that's prickly pear stamps, down in the information section, and then you'll see pumpkin stamps and dies, and they're all listed down there so you can see them. All right, that was a little glitchy thing right there. I don't know what that was up with. So I have pulled out a few sheets of paper here. Everything's been cut ahead of time to make life fast. I did a black background. I really kept with very Halloween-y kind of rustic colors. So we kept craft paper. We did, we're doing black and I don't know why that's doing that. Sorry guys, it's like blinking at me or something. <laughs> and then I have a couple of squares. So the first layer, which is gonna go on the card base. So this black piece is your four and a half, four and a quarter by five and a half, right? Then we have another sheet over top, and this has gone down by a quarter of an inch both ways. So now we're at four by five and a quarter. So I'll put that down. This is a great scrap buster card. And if you guys can tell, we were playing with the word boo, and then we have a little pumpkin. You could actually put your pumpkins in there for boo, but it worked as like the four, so it's just that last little piece, which means you could make this same card over and over and change out every single pumpkin if you wanted to which is kind of cool. I love it when I can do the same card, but it looks a little different each time. Then we are doing the orange and here's my fakey orange. This is actually like on the back side of like a sports page, but it's the perfect like pumpkin orange. And I don't like the sports page, but I got a whole bunch of them specifically for the orange paper because it was 12 by 12 and I use it every year and I'm still like going through it. So always look to see if there's a solid color on the back side because you may not like that, but you might love that which I do every Halloween. I'm like, where's the perfect orange? Oh, I have it. I have it exactly where I need it. Now I have another sheet of cardstock, which I just wanted to have another little something on the bottom here. And I'm not gonna quite put this down. I'm just gonna rest this here. So we're gonna put a little bit of some adhesive. This square right here measures to be four by four. No, sorry, three and a half by three and a half. That's the size of that square. And if you guys are really nice, I'll put the measurements after we're done. Just kidding. I'll put the measurements when we're done. I just didn't get around to doing it ahead of time. I'm sorry about that. So I'm just nesting this underneath and I want to put a stamp on here. So I'm going to look at the stamp set. There's some really, really cute sentiments on the, uh, the, the pumpkin one set. I just did ghoulish greetings, but I love by the pricking of my thumbs, something this wicked this way comes. So I want to be able to fit that on here. So how low this piece goes, because I want to fit this here. This is where I'm going to shift this up. It's kind of sticky. And once I get it there, there. So I want to leave lots of rooms. So this is where you can play with how low this banner goes, depending on how much you want to stamp. 
So we're going to place that there. Add a little more adhesive. Oops. There we go. And I don't want to get too many layers because we're going to go stamp this right now. Now that I've got this set, and I know this is going to look good there. That looks good. I'm just going to leave this off to the side, and let's go ahead and stamp this before I get too many paper layers going on here. And somebody's saying to smash that like, and I love that. Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to go back in here. This is another awesome use for this little sticky mat thing. Fantastic. So I can come in here, I can place this, and it sticks to here. So now I don't have to worry about the paper coming off every time I do a stamp. And I just put a magnet. So I've got sticky on the back, and I've got a couple of magnets. So it's just giving that extra oomph. Instead of having to put a little bit of adhesive to the back, this is helping solve some of that problem. Line this up right there. And pull up. See, look, it didn't pull up. And that's, I've never used that stamp before. It like stayed. It's awesome. And let's go ahead and ink up our beautiful stamp. I love it. You guys remember where that quote comes? By the pricking of my thumb, something wicked this way comes. Who can name where it's from? No, I had it. Oh, it's done. Famous quote. Who's going to get it? Now, this little block here is fantastic. This is a great way to get that pressure. It's also got little ridges on the inside. Obviously, it's from Prickly Pear. It comes in blue felt and red felt. So the felt is to make sure it doesn't damage up your, your system. And I need to add some more. But nobody's commenting what it comes from. Come on, guys. Nobody's got it. And it just makes stamping easier. And there it is. Really kind of cool. Very spooky vibes. I'm gonna take this off so I don't forget. I am the worst about remembering to put my stamps back in here. And I have a rogue stamp, rogue stamp that I forgot to put back that I still have off the side going, okay, whenever I see that set again, I know exactly where it is because I forgot to do what I just did. Just put it back in the stamp set. Silly me, silly, silly me. Hocus Pocus. Well, yes, but I don't think that's where it originally came from. Think old school. Like super old school. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna apply just a bit more adhesive. Right here, the swirly stuff. There you go, Macbeth. Somebody got it. Yay! <laughs> boil, boil, toil, and trouble. Yes, it's the line from Macbeth. The, the witches when Hamlet comes. Not Macbeth, but when Hamlet. Yeah. It's not Poe. No. It's Macbeth, or it's Hamlet, one of the two. Which was the one that had the witches? It's Shakespeare, I'll give you that. I think it's Hamlet though. But it fits with Poe too, right? At Growl and Poe, it totally fits. Okay, so now we have our stamp on here. We have our layers. And I went down with the black layer again, a quarter of an inch. So this was three and a half, so this is three and a quarter. And I cut my squares to be one and a half inches. I felt like it just fit just right. You could go a little bit bigger with your squares if you wanted to, but I thought one and a half worked really well, really, really well. And since we've got lots of bitty pieces and to get my tape runner into all those little bitty pieces, I'm pulling out my sticker maker again, and we're going to run this through. And instead of doing white, I did opt to do ivory on this one. I thought the ivory looked a little bit cooler. Something about it, I liked it better. So I'm just popping little squares in here. Just makes everything into a sticker and just makes life a whole lot easier. And since I have it out, I'll go ahead and throw my pumpkin in there. And now these are all stickers. Tear. And then just wipe, wipe, wipe. It's been a long time since I read anything Shakespeare. My son had to read one of the Shakespearean plays. Oh, it was freshman year. Of course, when we were in COVID, he's reading Romeo and Juliet. I feel like that's like a rite of passage to read Shakespeare when you're a freshman, especially Romeo and Juliet. I think he's got some more coming, but I don't know. This year he's got to read Fahrenheit. He's a junior now. So Fahrenheit 451. I love Ray Bradbury. He's got some awesome books. Fahrenheit's not even my favorite one. Anybody else here a, a bookie person, a reading person? I am get so hooked into reading that, especially at night, I will lose track of all time and then just keep reading and forget to go to sleep because I'll just get so hooked into whatever I'm reading. So initially I put the everything down 
and I didn't do the stitching on it. And I was like, it's missing something. So before I put anything else, because there's some overlaps and I had to kind of finagle my way around, I'm going to go ahead and stitch all of the squares first. So we're going to stitch all the way around. And heads up, we are streaming live from both Erin Reed Makes and Crippley Pear Stamps a YouTube and Facebook channel. So welcome, welcome, wherever you are watching. And if you would like to follow one or the other or all, the links are down below to follow social media for both Erin Reed Makes and Crippley Pear Stamps. We would love to have you. So whenever I feel like there's just too much of a blank space, this is my go-to. And obviously since we have black, I'm doing black, but if I needed a lighter color or if I wanted a color match, I would go with you know, a gel pen or a white pen or something. But black stitching tends to be my go-to. It's kind of like my default. If it needs something else, what should I do? This is what I do. Anybody else stitch on their cards? Like pens, I know some people like true stitch stitch, like needle and thread and more power to you. I think that's why I love card making so much is that there's no one thing you can do there's so many techniques you can do on a card. It's just a smaller space to play and create. And I think that's the best part. So stitching is done. We're gonna add in our beautiful pumpkin on our funny background paper. I mean, paper's paper. I was digging through all my paper to find the perfect colors. And I was like, man, I got paper, I gotta use it. I'm like, I need to go buy it. No, I don't need to go buy more paper. I need to seriously like use up the paper I have because I have so much of it. But you have to find that perfect tone, right? You gotta find that perfect, perfect thing. Okay, so now we have that done. And this is where another scrap buster. This is coming back from my scrapbooky days. I was like, okay, I love the idea of the boo. And I know I've got like dyes that cut that out. I was like, but you know what I have the most of, and I know I have a ton of black. Alphabet stickers. <laughs> I pulled out my stash of alphabet stickers back from my scrapbooking days. So these things are pretty ancient. Some of them are probably 10 to 15 years old. This is a Pink Paisley one. The other one was a, a Thickers from American Crafts. But um, I think some of these are pretty darn old. But I had enough to make a boo a few times over. I think I had like six or seven different sets. So I got to cherry pick the ones I liked the best for the cards. Anybody else have some of these left over? I sure as heck do. And there's still like a lot left on here. There's so many. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to go with the bigger B and then I've got two. I might, I don't know. I was debating, do I want to do different size O's or I, I have two that are the same size here. So we'll do the big B, biggish B. It's still sticky. You got to give credit. And it's got a little bit of like some glitter action happening on there. It's like, if I got it, I might as well use it instead of like having to create it. But you could create something like this too. There's some really kind of cool stuff out there. But I was, I'm all about using up a stash if I have it. So there's the boo. It's a boo. <laughs> and that's as hard as that card gets. The only thing I need to do is take this card and then attach it to my base, which you could do whatever color you want. I tend to default to white because I can get so many. I have like white cardstock is probably the easiest color I can get. I buy the big giant pack of meat on my cardstock. It's got 200 sheets in it, I think. So if really you're only looking at the front of the card, plus it leaves the inside easy to write on, then I don't need to make the card base a color. I just need to make the card front, make it look like it's that color. Even though like I've got ivory here, my inside's white. So that is our first card. Yay! <laughs> and again, you can change up all of those pumpkins. Look at so many amazing pumpkins here. There is a ton of them. So just for Halloween pumpkins, one, two, three. And then on the other set, we have, whoops, that's upside down, four. And then there's the blank pumpkin, and then you've got five, six. So you could do two different faces over here. So there's a ton, a ton, a ton. Plus, there's like this creepy little, you know, what do you call that fence that you could, you know, like there's, there's lots of little fun stiffs that's stiffs things, <laughs> lots of fun things inside of here. And again, the one die, I gotta pop this off. This thing, I gotta use two hands because it's so strong. So the one die fits every single one of them, which I think is just amazing. And they're really cute. And then you can always go back and obviously use these, that glare is awesome. Um, you could use these for fall. So, so many fun options. And then you get some really cute sentiments. We have a happy fall. So you definitely hit the fall. And then there's ghoulish creatures, 
which is what I did on this one. And then by the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. The something wicked this way comes is also in Harry Potter, by the way. So something wicked this way comes. I don't know if you guys remember that. They sang it with the frogs. I think that was in the second movie, third movie. It wasn't in the book. It was in the movie, though. Anyway, that is our second card because we're going to go back to the first one we started, which was our spider web. And just to test, yep, look, it's dry. <laughs> so here is the first card. So we're going to do our bats. Now, if you love the pumpkins, you're going to love the bats because it's the same thing. There is two different sets of bats. Look at these. So you get one, two, three, four, five, and then there's four over here, but this one's got some extra little things on here, little spider web in the corner. And then you got little tiny bats over here. You got a little tie, so you can put a, a, a tie on a bat. You got some sentiments on here. We got two sentiments here and a couple sentiments here, and then someone's got some tiny bats. And again, one die that fits them all. I love this. I love these sets where it's just like the one shop, one stop shop, but look at all the options. So for this stamp or for this card, I did this one and I did this one. And this one says like cauldron bubble, boil and trouble and all that kind of stuff. So kind of going back to that concept. So this time I think I'm going to do this one. It looks so cool. So we're going to stamp these together. And then do you guys have an opinion? Well, I get this. I know I want to do that one, but let me see if I can angle this up a little bit so you guys can see. So stamp set one. Can you guys see that okay? Or should we do stamp set two? Which one? I think it's easier if I take it out of the plastic. All right. So set one, set two. I think the glare is okay. Pick another bat. One, two, three, four. So set one, A, B, C, D, E or set to A, B, D, because I'm doing C already. You tell me <laughs> Well, I get everything correct. Let's do it as a, if you guys don't say I have one that I'm gonna pick, but if you got one, we're gonna stamp this on white. So keep that in mind. I'm not gonna stamp this on black. We're gonna stamp this on white. So is there a thought of which one you would like to do? Well, I get all the stuff. I gotta find paper. Here we go. Anybody? 1B. So this one, let me say in this one, this one's got a vote so far, 1B. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or like set 1, A, B, C, D, E. There we go. Or set 2, A, B, D. <laughs> you like 1B as well? I, 1B is the winner. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out a way to like say all that because it's just not, I couldn't figure out how to do that. All right. I got a giant sheet of paper here, but we're only going to use the smallest. Actually, I got to die cut this out. So let's cut our paper. Make sure I got the width of our bat here. And then again, I just can stick this wherever I like. It's awesome. I will put the, since I got magnets, I'll put the magnets down. So we're going to do this set. And this set's really hard to forget, too. This is called, I believe, just bats. Bats one, bats two. <laughs> so lots of options for bats here. You're going back crazy. I'm not going to say the S word part of it, but you're going back crazy. All right. So the first two ones I did had a lot of black in the actual, because you're stamping and it had a lot of black in there. These two, oops, there we go. These two have a little bit more white in them. So there's going to be a bit of more of a white reserve left behind. All right. We got some more people on. We got Melody and Kim and Lisa and Deborah. Hello, hello. We got lots of people on, and just because I don't want to get everything too gross. All right, we'll do a couple passes on this. Again, pull out my handy dandy little stamp block here. Somehow I keep my kids are of the generation they watch Blue's Clues, so every time I hear handy dandy, I want to hear handy dandy notebook, <laughs> but it's stamp block. Anybody else have kids of that generation of Blue's Clues? Anybody? <laughs> That remembers that concept? Wait, wait, wait. It's funny how we catch, we, because we watch these kids' shows, or at least I did. You know, you're so bored, or I'm nursing one child while the other one's, you know, kind of in the same room, so you end up watching all the same stuff. The one that I didn't mind the most of, 
that I actually was pretty entertained by and I wouldn't mind watching, and I watched them over and over and over, was uh, Backyardigans. So I was of Backyardigans and Dora the Explorer, and Diego, but Backyardigans was the one I didn't mind to watch. I'm gonna do a third pass just because I want this nice and dark. There we go. Aren't those pretty? I just think they're so cool. I love those bats. And again, taking them off so I don't forget. Not that I wouldn't forget where the bat ones came from, like which set they would go back to, but still, I don't want to. I have learned over the years of how many times I have stamped and different things. And if I don't do it while I'm actively, like it just becomes a habit, you should do it. So I'm going to do. All right. Now we are going to die cut these guys. Hope everybody's having an awesome day. My son is in band and he is had a game tonight. Backyard against is cute, right? I love backyard against. So he has practice this morning. So he's in marching band. Anybody else family in marching band? And their schedule is so bananas because they have, okay, I had the bat. This is why I should have stuck it back on there. This is why you don't just walk away. All right, people, where'd the bat go? There it is. That's why you use that. God. That's exactly why you use this thing right there. Because you'll lose it if it's on your desk. I should like it's right in front of me. Oh, Aaron, come on. <laughs> My son plays the clarinet and they are awesome. They made it to state last year and they got to finals and they ended up getting 10th in state. And I don't know if you guys know how competitive marching band is in Texas. It is crazy, crazy. Scram some washi tape. Which love the little cutie cat. I fell in love with this thing. It's most adorable, the washi tape dispenser. <laughs> so I want to make sure I line this up. So I'm just looking, and I'm looking at the top and the bottom. I'm okay if I get a little bit of a white background. And just making sure I don't see anything. And then boom. So they made it to state finals last year. And they also, for anybody who um, has been in band, you guys know there's called Bands of America. And they made it to like top three in a couple of the different competitions last year. So this year they qualified to go to Grand Nationals. And so they're flying to Indiana, to Indianapolis to compete in Grand Nationals in November. Out. <laughs> you guys ever do this? Ah, oh, it's not working. <laughs> All right, we'll do it this way. Pink. There it goes. There's our first little bat. Sometimes if you throw it, they pop out. Um, the cute cat, oh, so the little kitty cat came from Stationary Pal. And Stationary Pal has a bunch of different things. The washi tape as well. But this little kitty cat dispenser came from them, and I just thought it was the best thing in the world. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't resist. I mean, the amount of times that I grab washi tape for doing exactly what I'm doing, for just holding things down, I'm like, I've got to get that, because that's just the most little adorable dispenser in the world. And it's smaller than my tape tape dispenser, which is what I put my sublimation tape in. But this one needs a little bit more heft because it's stronger. So this little kitty cat, yeah, is just for my washi tape. And I just I thought it was adorable. And it's easier to find on my desk. I'm all about cute and functional. Like this guy. <laughs> He's cute and functional. And by the way, this also, the, um, the prickly pear, the magnet holder, also comes in teal. Which, you know me, I love me some teal. It is pretty cute. Okay, so it's lining up my little bat again. I would have done the bats ahead of time, but since there are so many bat options, I wanted to give you guys the option, since we're live, to tell me which ones to stamp. So that's, I'm trying to do a better job of like letting you guys decide what we're gonna do while we're here. Like I'll have a general idea, but like you guys pick the color. I gotta get my pokey tool, it's not working. <laughs> you guys, like you guys pick some of the stuff that's going on. So if you ever have any problems getting your dies out, there's little holes in the back. Just use a little poker tool and then it pops out. Ta da! Easy peasy. Some things I do ahead of time just because it takes too long to do it. But I wanted you guys to pick out the bats because they're adorable. And they're so much fun. So, so I don't lose my bats. <laughs> Somehow I just love the idea of just like throwing it on there and it stays. It's just like the best thing in the world, right? <laughs> The marching bands performing are awesome. Like right now, his performances are kind of like 
because it's like they, they're still wearing like t-shirts and shorts on the field. They don't have all their props yet. They don't have all the movements done. They're still tweaking the show and like it gets better and better. But like if you watch the show tonight, because they're playing tonight, and he won't get home until like midnight. And he's got school tomorrow. That's what I mean. Like his, his schedule's crazy. He was up the, and up at six, doesn't get home until midnight. He had two tests today. I mean, it's bananas. And he had a photo appointment on top of it all. <laughs> Kids got a busy schedule. Um, but yeah, if you catch them like as you get like closer to Grand Nationals, like end of October, that's when the show is like at its peak, peak, peak. It's night and day difference between now and then. So it's, it's going to be exciting to see it. It'll be a ton of fun. So there, you've never seen some of the really cool marching performances. And his is more like there's all different kinds of bands. His is probably a little bit closer to performance type versus it's not military. It's more performance based. All right. So there's our cutie bats. I love it. So just to show you the difference, same bats, except these bats, when I stamped because the stamps the way they are, there's a lot more that's actually getting stamped on. So more black is getting stamped over versus the white. This one, you're going to see more white because there's less actually being stamped onto the paper. You could also do it in black and stamp in like a white color. So it really pops, but you know, whatever floats your boat, however you want to do that. My white ink is not the best. It tends to smear and get messy. And I didn't want to do that. The only other thing we're going to do now. So we're going to, this is a card you kind of kind of keep on coming back to is, and you guys tell me if you want to do it or not on this one, on the edges, I don't know if you guys can tell, I added a little bit of some glitter going all over on the edge. I took my little um, pops of color and then just outlined to give it a little bit of some shine. Do you guys want me to add the pops of color to this or leave them plain? I'll do that while I'm getting the stamp out. You guys, because I know there's a delay. You tell me what we should do. Because we got to stamp our sentiment. Should we glitter them up or not? So let's get our thing on here. I'm just going to put the things there. And then let's do, I did flying by with Halloween high on that one. Why not? Okay. I love that. I love that comment. Why not? So this is wishing you happy Halloween. We have hope your Halloween is hauntingly, happily, and perfectly batty. Okay. I got to go with that one because that one's like the best one ever. And then I already did this one, which is flying by with Halloween. I love this one. Hope your Halloween is hauntingly happy and batty. <laughs> That's something that, just, that makes me giggle when I hear that. That's just fun. <laughs> so let's use that one. So that's why I left enough room with the spider web, which is why I went in the top corner to leave room to put a sentiment. I could go actually for this one, I'm going to go over on that side. For this one, I went here because I felt like the spider web kind of came down between that word and then the high and it kind of fit, and it didn't quite fit with that little spider web piece. So I knocked it over this one, plenty of room. So hence the difference. Sometimes you may have an idea of where you want to put it. And because of another element on the page, it just doesn't quite work. So you tweak and you work it out and you figure out a path to make it function. All right, stamp, stamp. Where's my block? You guys should see my desk. It's bananas. Where's the block? In the drawer where I put it <laughs> to get it off the desk. I have drawers just underneath my, my workstation here because it just, it gets so full. So as you might hear me open and close a drawer every now and then, so I'm putting like my bigger pieces like this because I have it right at my, like at my knees. So I just step back, open the door and grab it. I also do it with my tape, just around uh, my tape trimmer. Paper trimmer, that's the word. I'm gonna do one more. I feel like it needs just a little bit extra on there. A little bit more. There we go. Ta-da. All right. Again, take the stamp off. Put it away so I don't lose it. I know I'm being like super meticulous about this, but I have lost so many stamps. I've taken a stamp set out and gone, oh, I don't know where it went. And I swear half of them ended up in the trash because they got stuck on something. Inevitable. All right. We're going to build most of the card and we're going to go ahead and stick these down. And then it's going to get the glitter on top of that. So this is going to end up going on a white card base. So just here's our white card base. Again, I use the white just because I have so much of it and I don't have as much black cardstock. So this is just a little money saver. I meant yellow. Like, I don't have a ton of yellow cardstock. This is just a little bit of a money saver. You make a white base 
and then just create a new card front and then you're good. You don't have to make the whole card yellow. It's just the front of the card. So you can use all of them white card bases to save yourself a little bit of money. So yellow was my background because it reminded me of like the bats flying in the moon, but any color you want to do. You could do it purple, orange, green. This is the one holiday. I don't know if you really call Halloween a holiday, but season, oh, event. I'm going to call it a holiday for lack of a better term. This is the one where I feel like has the most color options. Like if you think about all the other holidays, Christmas, red, white, and green. Valentine's Day, pink, red, white, maybe purple, right? Uh, Fourth of July, red, white, and blue. Uh, autumn, like, you know, Thanksgiving, definitely like autumn colors, right? It is a holiday. It should be a holiday. <laughs> but Halloween, oh, my God, you've got orange, purple, green, yellow, you name it, black, gray. There is a, a plethora of colors to pick from when you think Halloween, at least I do. So, all right, now we're going to put our cute little bats on here. I think like bats, just kind of flying off having some fun. I'm going to put a couple of sticky dots. I want them popping off here. I just grabbed whatever I found. I rearranged a drawer and I found these really big ones. So we're going to use them. I'm all about using up what's in my stash. And that really had a Southern drawl to it. And I'm not from Texas, but I've lived here a long time. I have lived in Texas for a very, very long time. Anybody guess? Well, I think you guys all probably know, but somebody didn't know where I was from. And they're like, you're not from Texas. And I said, nope. <laughs> Not, not, not originally. No, I'm not. And they caught it by something I said. It was probably my events. <laughs> There's the hint of where I'm from. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to go around the edge. I do want to do a quickie test. So I'm going to take a little tiny sheet of scratch paper and just make sure that I've got a good bead. Like I also want to get pressure. So I do waste a little bit just to make sure I got good pressure and that it's coming out clean. And then I'm just going to run around the edge. And then this is one that you've got to be super, so you're not stuck again. Come on. You just flowed like there was no problem. What in the patootie happened? Sometimes you got to pull out the pokey tools. I don't know why I did that. It worked great. And then it stopped. So there's got to be something right in here. All right. Here we go. Da -da. Canada. Named it. <laughs> yes, I'm originally from Canada. That is what I'm from. But I've lived all over the world. So I definitely have, and I've moved around as much as a kid. So I feel like all of my accent has just gotten turned into a giant mush ball. Like it's just a hodgepodge of everything. But I don't really, I don't know. My kids still say that I say A. I don't, I don't know if I do or not. I'm just doing the edges of the, of the bats, just going around the edges. My grand, oh yeah, you're from Holland. I know, I love that Wendy is from Holland. That is where my grandmother's from. She grew up, she's from Tilburg. She came to Canada during World War II. She was a war bride that came over on one of the boats. But I've been to Tilburg and I loved it there. So every time Wendy gets on, I'm like, aw. <laughs> I can, and I can picture my grandmother's accent. She never spoke Dutch. But she had this beautiful accent. I love it. So every time I hear somebody say stuff, it's just awesome. You're from Texas and stuck in Illinois. <laughs> I love how you guys are like, I'm stuck someplace. <laughs> it's funny how we get attached to where we're originally from or where our roots are from. It's like we have this like need to be where we're born, even though, you know, whatever. <laughs> 8.45 p.m. is not too bad. That's not too terribly late. So this is our second card. And look how different, just because the stamps. And remember, there's a ton of different stamps on here. I love all of these sets where it's like so many fun options, but one die. You know, the one singular die that fits them all, which is fantastic. So a lot more of a darker set. And I could make, with all the different combinations of bats on here, you could do so, so many different, same card, but different combos of bats. You could stamp all the bats and just make a ton of cards. And obviously this is just one of a plethora of card designs to do with bats. You could have a ton of fun. But I just like the spider web. It just is that kind of spooky, Halloween-y kind of vibe to it. So that is our second card. And if you missed the first one, we played around with the pumpkins and made a little boo card. A little bit of a vintage -y vibe on this one. And then the last card we're going to make, 
So, okay, I gotta be very careful. That one is wet. So I'm gonna put this in a very special place, up high, <laughs> so it's not gonna get stuck on anything. Our last card, I gotta find it, it's buried. Again, is one of these awesome cards that has so many fun options. This one is gonna be a little bit of a fun teaser card. This is a square card. So this is a four by four card that we're gonna cut the bottom off, and then it's got a little bit of a different insert for the base. Lots of Southern ladies here today, oh my goodness. Living in Houston, we've got, I know Florida, we got Ohio, Alabama, man, lots of people all over the place. <laughs> and then we've got Holland in the house, which I love. I love that. So I took a four by four sheet of paper and I opened the card up and I placed these stitching dies. So there's a whole bunch of them. Apparently I didn't want to take it all the way out. So there's a whole slew of these. These ones are called scalloped edges, border dies, scallop border dies. And there's one that actually says happy birthday on it. So you could do it on the bottom of a full A2 size card. There's also a stitched border, there's a dotted border, and then a scallop border. And the cool thing about this one is once I die cut it, that was a really big, because I had to pull out my big die cut machine so I did this ahead of time. Pop this off. You're left with, pull that out. you're left with that little border. Now you can leave it white, but like I can't see that white. So if you put another color in there, which you know because we're Halloween, but this could work for just about any card. I mean, pick a different layer that goes on top and it'll look totally cute. We're gonna put that orange in here. There's that sports paper again. I love that orange. The orange is awesome. And then just go right into that corner right there and then lay it down and then boom. And then that's your new inside. And I still feel like this is light enough that you can write on it and it's no big deal. And then it closes up. And I didn't do the greatest job of lighting it up on the side. So you see a tiny bit orange. That one I did a much better job of. When you're live, you don't always are exact as you need to be. That's okay. So then what I did is I took a whole bunch of these nesting scallop circles, which are on here. So this is another set. And they're like these scallopy circles, but there's nesting. That's the biggest one. So that's this guy right here. And then this is the next size, which is this one. And then there's this one. And then there's also just a plain circle as well. So this is another set. So you get the, all four of those dies. And I believe it's called scallop nesting circles. So those are already done. I love that. I don't even have to like, they're like on top of the magnet. so strong that I can just throw them on top of it. So I like the idea of the black. And then I did have this, this one here, but when I originally, like it looked awesome just like this, but then as soon as I put the cupcake on there, I was like, uh, it's too much. There was just too many different things going on. So I flipped it over and I did like the look of the little jack-o'-lanterns. So it was just a pattern paper that I have, it's Halloween-y. And then I just matched all the colors that were in there. But then I thought, okay, well this one's too orangey on orange. Let's tie in that purple color. So what I mean by like Halloween, there's so many fun colors. And I like that color. So just playing around with it, it worked really well. You guys have a whole different conversation going on there right now. I love it. <laughs> so let's layer this up. And this design, take away the fact I'm using Halloween colors. You could use this design with any, any theme. And I'll show you what I mean by any theme because you're about to see them. This is another super, super, super cute set. And here we go. Okay, so the, the base is made. Now you just have to assemble all your cupcakes, which are right here. Okay, so look, these are the cutie, cutie cupcakes. And now I don't know where my cupcake dies, but I just realized they're like not, they're attached to something. <gasps> where did I put them? They're hiding on my desk somewhere. Okay. And I have the, okay. I'll, I'll have to hunt for a minute. Let me talk about this first. I just freaked out for a second going, where are they? Because they're not on. Oh, no, they are. They're on the back. Oh, okay. I just totally about lost my, my conniption here. So they're on the back side. <laughs> I remember doing that at the beginning of the show. Okay. So this is a whole set of really, really cute cupcakes. I did on this one, I did the boots. So it looks like little witch's boots. And then we have a whole bunch of different cupcake tops and cupcake bottoms. So on this set, you have a couple of autumn ones. Here's an autumn one. 
and then you get three kind of Halloweeny ones, and here's a couple of autumn ones, and then I did the couple of bottoms. So colored, here's the one I've already colored, and then we're just gonna die cut them together. But here's the best part. You also have Christmas cupcakes. So you can have a ton of fun Christmas cupcakes. You've got gingerbread men, and you've got all kinds of really holiday-ish ones. You've got traditional happy birthday cupcakes. And then we also have another like love, so like Valentine's Day. And again, the best part is it is one die set, which I stuck on the back and totally freaked myself out because I didn't see it. Because the back's magnetic too. So you can get the cupcake die that fits all of them. And then you also get the hearts and then that little thing, which I believe. So it cuts out the hearts here. And then I don't know what that cuts out. Something else on here. Sharon, what does that one cut out? <laughs> I can't quite figure it out because I'm looking at it. But there's four different dyes depending on what season you want. Halloween slash autumn, Christmas, Valentine's Day, and uh, birthday. And one stamp set, one die set that fits it. So I think that's awesome. Again, it's one of those ones where there's a whole bunch of options. You can mix and match tops and bottoms. And there's extra little tidbits in here that are really fun as well. All right, so let's die cut that guy out. So here we've got to find, got to find the top. Here it is. So didn't get to die cutting this one ahead of time. Sorry. Like I said, I had to get my son to his orthodontic appointment this morning in between his two tests. <laughs> oh, the cupcakes are adorable. Life as a mom is never, and I was supposed to go live yesterday. And so sorry if anybody jumped on yesterday and was like, where is Aaron? I had no internet yesterday. That's why our card making Wednesday is on a Thursday today because I had no internet. Go figure. Ah, oh, I had no idea why. And it was gone for like two hours. Of course, it comes back on at about 1.45. But by that point, I would not have had enough time because I have to pick up my daughter from school. So she's the first one out. I got kids in all three levels this year. One high schooler, one middle schooler, one elementary schooler. Uh, never ends. There's our cutie cupcakes. And then before I forget, these are going on there. So I don't lose them. They are super, super versatile stamps. I feel like you've got so many fun options. And then just because I don't want to pull out any other gear right now, we're just going to put a little adhesive on the backs. Whatever glue or adhesive. Put the little bottom cupcake on there. And a little top cupcake. I didn't realize I had a lot of purple when I did the purple background, but there you go. So look, that's just super simple, right? Easy, easy. The hardest part is deciding what top and what bottom. And then the coloring on this is so simple because it's like, oh, well, I have a bottom section. Okay, well, that's one color. I have a middle section. Okay, that's, oh, there's eyeballs. Let's have fun coloring eyeballs. Like this is such an easy coloring set because you just, I, I had literally like six colors I pulled out. Again, purple, green, yellow, uh, orange and gray. That's it. That's all I pulled out and colored them all. So you can mix match for this particular set. You can mix and match the whole batch. And I just love that it's a different kind of a shape to the card because there's a little bottom piece here. I just think it's all kinds of fun. So, um, is there a sale or promotion code? You have to ask Sharon. I'm not sure if she is still on. Sharon's the owner of Prickly Pear. I'm not sure if she's still there. Um, as of right now, I'm not aware of one, but there might be one if you get to the website. There might be one that's there. So we're just playing around with Halloween cards. Look how fun. Aren't these the coolest thing ever? And I, I tried to go like cutesy, vintagey, and like more like spooky-ish. If that really hits spooky. I don't know if that really gets into like the spooky bill or not, but different strokes for different folks here, people, <laughs> is where I'm kind of going. And again, all the supplies are listed down below. So if you are interested... And anything, including like the little kitty cat dispenser that I was holding up, whatever I was using, I did a much better job because I had a whole extra day to get prepared for this. Um, except for I didn't die cut the one, one cupcake. Everything else was done ahead of time. But um, all the links are listed down below. Again, if you're watching from Brickley Pear or from my channel, check each other's out. And do not forget the 20K giveaway. Link is down below. So still enter. I am picking out the winners on Wednesday. So stay tuned, I'll be going live on Wednesday, over $1,200 worth of prizes. And if you are a member of my channel, there is special prizes just for being a member and for 
always for being a member for any giveaway, you have your name in the hat and extra time for all of my giveaways. So it just gives you that extra little boost of a chance to win. So link is down below to join the 20K giveaway last couple of days, so don't forget. And I hope you guys have an amazing day. Links for all supplies again are down below. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys again later. And don't forget to have an amazing, amazing day. Bye, everybody. Gotta find the end button. There it is. Bye. <laughs>